Fruits Basket is such a good show. There are a lot of shows I like this year that I've talked about before in the 12 days, but Fruits Basket just stands out in a different way. Like I like the action suspense that we have from Promise Neverland, Attack on Titan, My Hero, and all that. But Fruits Basket offers something different. It's a lot more down-to-earth, human. Yes, there are some supernatural aspects to it, but that's really not the focus of the story. It's instead about these broken characters going through life. I talked about this show a lot this year. I had two videos on it, one about the power of it, what makes it so good, and another on the message, getting into what it is trying to say and how it is trying to teach the viewer to be a better person. Plus, I was also part of the Fruits Basket podcast that I did with C-Tactics over on his channel, which, yeah, we, we said lots of things, and that was a lot of fun. But I still want to talk more about it, because the show is that good. So I decided for this day of the 12 Days of Anime, I'm going to go through some of my favorite scenes uh, from the series, and why I like them so well. This video might be a little bit more uh, with me going on lots of tangents because it's unscripted and I might not edit this much, so I hope you enjoy me having no idea what I'm talking about. If you watch the podcast, you should definitely be used to this. Alright, so the first scene is Toru wanting to go home. This scene was really powerful. It was the episode when uh, Toru's grandfather had finished construction at their home and so she was invited to come back, live with the family, and all that. But when she was there, she was she did not want to be there. Even though it's Toru, and she would never say that, being grateful just to have a place to live. And then, uh, you had Kyo and Yuki basically show up, whisk her away, take them back to their home. In this scene, in this episode, we got to see Toru finally getting to voice what she wanted. Toru is such a selfless person, and that is a wonderful thing about her. That's why I want to be more like Toru. But her weakness is also this, that she is the selfless. She wants to give to others. She will never ask for what she truly wants. In this episode, we got a moment for, for her to be able to say that, what she wanted. She wanted to go back to the family that she loved with the Somas, with Kyo and Yuki and Shigure. These are people that she wants to spend her life with. Fruits Basket is all about finding a place to belong, a family, even if it's different than your biological family. And she's found it. This is so important for her and for the Somas and for everyone, to find your family. And in this moment, she's going to be a bit selfish and decide that is what she really wants. Just such a great scene. Then we have New Year's, another scene and episode that continues on this trend. And again, just a pure, wonderful episode. Shigure, Kyo, and Yuki are going to back to the Soma estate to spend New Year's there as per tradition. But, the, but this means they are going to have to leave Toru back at their home alone. Toru is fine with this. She knows that they have their things to do, and while she will be alone, she's not going to complain, because she's Toru, of course. She could spend the New Year's with Uo or Hana, but she doesn't want to impose on them, though I'm sure both of them would be more than happy to have her there. So, she's there alone. But then Hana shows up uh, to Kyo and Yuki and basically tells them they need to go be with Toru. And so they are there, right as Toru is about to cry, being alone for New Year's for the first time in her life. This episode, again, showed the importance of the family that they have found together. And instead of Toru leaving her biological family to be with the Somas, Kyo and Lu Yuki are leaving their biological family to be with Toru, because that is what really matters to them. A lot of the story is, in a way, the character is trying to break free of the curse of the Somas. Not always in a literal way, but more of a symbolic way. Like, what do they care about? How do their actions reflect that? And they care about Toru. So they put everything aside from their past and spend the time with her. And I also just love how uh, Toru is like talking to Uo, showing that 
how much they care about each other. And then when Toru remarks that, oh, I will make sure to call Hana first thing in the morning, how Hana then responds from her house saying that I look forward to it. That's just a great thing about Hana. We'll talk more about Hana later on. The next scene I want to talk about is Akito showing up at the school. And oh boy, this was an episode. The episode started off very comedic. One of the funniest um, scenes in the whole anime uh, with Haru and the Skuzun Council President and Momiji. And yeah, extremely hilarious. But then things got dark. And you saw how terrifying Akito is. Even if you weren't look at at first. Like he is a very frail person. But he's able to strike fear into Yuki with a single touch. And this is a moment where Toru broke from how she normally is. Toru loves everyone. She wants to believe in the best about everyone. But she knows the danger that Akito poses when uh, he's there with Yuki. And I also found it interesting how at first Akito and Toru were very cordial. Toru is like, oh, I'm so glad to meet the head of the Soma family. It's good to meet you. I hope we'll get along. But then when Yuki showed up, Toru like, threw all that away, pushing Akito away. And we see how Yuki is growing here, though we don't understand his complete backstory. We know that he wants to break free from Akito. And Toru is allowing him to do that. Yuki even comments that this is a life that he wants with what Toru is giving him and with all the friends that he has. So it is really cool to see how he is break, breaking free from Akito, though it is not a complete break yet, as we see more later on in the show, and I know we will in the next couple seasons. Then there is Momiji's backstory. Again, a remarkable episode. This episode had two amazing scenes, the Momiji one and then the Grave one. But let's talk about Momiji's uh, scene first. We learn that Momiji was rejected by his mother because of him turning into a rabbit like that. And so his mother had her memories erased. She has no idea she has Momiji as a son. Momiji makes this comment, though, that he does not want to forget anything. He wants to embrace the painful memories and not run away from them because they make him who he is. And this is so inspirational. Momiji was a wonderful character before we saw this scene, but understanding where he's coming from makes him even greater. It feels like some anime tried to make us sympathize with the character by giving them a tragic backstory. And tragic backstories definitely help, but it feels cheap if that's the only reason we like a character. Like every character in Fruits Basket, at least the vast majority of them, I ended up growing to really care about before I knew where they came from. And then seeing the backstories like this, I appreciate them even more. And one of the things I loved about this scene is how after Momiji was finished telling his story, how his mother couldn't hug him, Toru hugged him. And it's like Toru is the person that is giving all these characters the love that they are missing in their lives. And that scene, just so emotional. Momiji is best boy. Yes, I know pretty much all the guys are best boys, but Momoji is definitely a best boy. Then we have the scene at the grave, which is filled with a lot of mystery, but it also shows us a lot about Kyoko and the person she was and how that influenced the person Toru is. And I just love the fact that they are having like a big party at the cemetery. This may not make sense, but they're here to celebrate Kyoko's life. They are here to celebrate the impact that Kyoko had on all of them. And they're having fun, which Kyoko would have wanted them to do. Like, I, uh, my mom has even said she wants her funeral to be a big party. So I can relate to this understanding. Hopefully it will be a long time until that happens. But that's definitely a wish that I will honor. Speaking of Kyoko, though, we have Uo's episode. Well, her two episodes, mainly the last one, which I actually just saw like two nights ago, I think it was, rewatching it. And yeah, that was amazing, both the first time and the second time. We learn about Uo, her backstory, why she is the person she is. For the first like half of the show, I really did like her. Like, she was really tough. She was there for Toa, a great friend. Plus, she brought a lead pipe to school. How is that not a cool person? 
But then you see her past, that she's part of a gang that she broke free from after meeting Kyoko and Toru. And I love how this shows the impact Toru has on people. How she's able to inspire them to become better people. See, it's not just me as the viewer who wants to be more like Toru. All the characters do. And one of the things with uh, Uo here is how she was able to just, like, grasp... Actually, I don't know where that sentence was going. But the scene that most impacted me on my second time through was when Toru was in a cooking class and someone made the comment that she made to me asking her what she was going to do with him. Unbeknownst to her, Ua was outside of the building but could overhear them. And Toru made the comment that these are for Uo-chan. This is after there had been a lot of rumors about them. Ua felt bad that she was bringing Toru down with her with all the rumors, thinking Toru must be a bad person for hanging out with Uo. But then Uo heard that and knew that Toru truly did care about her. And so that made Uo want to change. Knowing that someone cares about you is such a powerful feeling. That's what, like, friendship is all about. I talk about friendship a lot because it's that's how I feel. One of the most important things in life is being with those you care about, be them friends, family, whatever. And this is a case of that. I can relate to it, too. It's not that long ago to say friend was made a comment saying, I'm really glad that I'll get to see you soon. And that just resonated. It's like, yes, you are a person that I really care about. I want, like, I want to cherish that relationship. And that's how Uo felt here, leading her to change her life. It was not easy. It was violent. Lots of pain involved, which change often does. Not like this normally, but change is painful. Though we see Kyoko carrying Uo back, and just the words that she had for Uo here, the contrast between like the dark past and the world filled with color, and just the rain breaking and all that. This is a powerful episode, and it shows the power that a kindness like Toru has, along with the kind strength like Kyoko has, and how, over time, they can change someone. Speaking of changing someone and Uo, I have to talk about Hana's episodes. I forget if it's one or two episodes. I've not gotten this far in the rewatch yet. But they were also so incredible. For a long time, there's a question like, is Hana... Are Hana's powers real? Because they seem like a joke thrown in at first. But supernatural powers are not uncommon for the show. Like we have the Somas and their transformation and whatever more is going on with that. And plus, it was during the New Year's episode where Hana made a comment saying, I look forward to your call, despite not being near Toru at all. And there should be no way that Hana would know that Toru said that she was going to call. Which is a very clever way to foreshadow, saying like, yes, her powers are actually real. And during the backstory of Hana episodes, we see how real they are. Where Hana nearly killed a person just by the desire of it with her wave powers. She's terrified of her powers. But similar to Uo, Toru is able to reach out to Hana. This time with Uo's help, and that is able to save her. And I just love how this changes Hana. How this grows the relationship between the three of them. I love that this is a show where the two best friend characters are not just thrown off after the main plot kicks in, but no, they are actively involved. They want to be there for Toru, and while Toru is spending more time with the Sonomas instead of them, they're not going to let Toru just go off onto her own without them. They're too good of friends for that. And the final moment I want to talk about is Kyo's transformation. Oh boy, this was a climax to season one, that's for sure. When I first watched it, I was kind of disappointed that it almost felt too predictable. But I don't feel that that's a fair assessment. Because like I was told it would be really good. And it was really good. So it matched what I was told. <laughs> and seeing Kyo here, seeing the thing that he had been trying to keep him from so long, basically forced to the forefront and forced to confront that with Toru was just so incredible. I also loved as we saw Toru's fear, but also her love, her love driving him forward. And how Kyo wanted someone to, to truly, who could truly see him and not run away. 
there's a lot of pain in Kyo's past that we feel like we just get small glimpses of. But through this episode, we saw much more of it. But I don't think it's quite everything. And once again, we see the power that Toru has. And I loved it. Toru's kindness can do incredible things. Pretty much every scene I've talked about is how Toru's kindness changes a person. How it gives you how it united Yuki and Kyo to have Toru come back to their home. How New Year's they because of their love of Toru, they threw uh, joining their family aside to go be with her. How she was able to save Yuki from Akito at the school. How he how she was able to give Momoji the love that she never or that he never got from his mother. How she's able to reach out to Uo and Hana and save them. And how she's able to bring Kyo back from his monster form. Fruits Basket is an incredible show. One that I 100% recommend. It being one of the best shows of the year, if not decade. Actually, I'm going to say it now without going through everything. It is one of the best shows in the decade. Probably a top 10, if not higher. So... Go check it out. Actually, you should not have watched this if you did not already check it out. Because I just spoiled like the entire season for you. But I hope you've enjoyed me talking about Fruits Basket and the scenes that meant so much to me. And I will join you tomorrow for another video that I will figure out tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you as always for watching and for joining me for the 12 Days of Anime.